Welcome to a Drop Tent Media Production. Coming to you pre-recorded from the Drop Tent Media Studios in downtown Saskatchewan, Alberta, <laughs> Canada. It's the Magical Misery Tour. <laughs> Magical Misery. With your host, Jesse Dran. Hey, that's me. How you doing? I have a ponytail. I'd make mention of that. We got a very fun episode with you this week with uh, our buddy Pete Eckenroth. We've been trying to have him on for a little bit. Wasn't really working out, but uh, Pete's got some good stories. Um, so let's just start with the base and leave it there. Uh, me and Pete grew up in the same town. We're born at the same hospital and were circumcised by the same doctor with hilarious consequences. None of these are jokes we get into it deeply. It's, uh, it's, let's just say I found the incident scarring. <laughs> so check it out and check out Pete Eckenroth's show Cave that is every Friday at, did he say 17th in Arlington, I believe? I believe so. 17th in Arlington. Just look up Cave, comedy open mic. They have great shows there. They had Stavros from uh, podcast Come Down recently and i think they yeah. sold out did very, very i believe well. if you put in cave philly to any yeah. of your uh, social media stuff you will find a uh, cave that's right so go check it out and enjoy this week's episode love you Welcome to the Magical Misery Tour, where funny people discuss life's unfunniest things. I am Jesse Ponytail Jones. With me, as always, is my uh, my name's Jesse Dram, and my co-host is always Mr. Neil Wood. Neil, how you doing? I'm doing well, uh, D. D. I'm doing well, dude. I'm all right. Yeah. Happy Happy uh, Saturday to you. Happy Thursday, Thursday to our when listeners. you're listening. That's hey. right. Yeah. Oh, you'll be listening to this on my motherfucking birthday. Oh, yeah, that's right. Ooh. 33, finally old enough to be crucified, trademark Jeff Roser. Fine, All right. fine, finally. Thank God. Yeah. I've been planning that for you for a while now. <laughs> I've always wanted a surprise party. If that's the way you want to do it, I'm absolutely fine with that. Mm-hmm. Our well, guest yeah. this week, very funny local guy, hometown boy for me, kind of. We'll get into that. Uh, Pete Eckenroth. How you doing, oh. buddy? Pretty great. What's up, skaters? How are we doing? Not much, man. That's a good cramp shirt. I really don't Thank like you. that. Yeah. Before we do anything. You had the cramps. My uh, sister. Well, she was yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great start to a podcast. Yeah. We are crushing it. You know it, what they man. call her down at the office? The daily rag. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Oh, boy. Uh, before we get started, anything to promote? Social media? Put it all out there. Oh, uh, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at, at PeteEck42. And I'll be at the uh, Ship of Fools Music Festival on Saturday, October 2nd. Okay. Uh, you just buy a ticket or what? Oh, not second. <laughs> October 7th. No, I'm uh, doing stand up and emceeing the comedy oh, stage. Nice. Okay. Uh, that's Pete Eck, E C K. Yeah, Pete E C K 42 on Instagram and Twitter. There we go. Okay. You got any spots available on that? I'll be out of town anyway. Oh, yeah, we do. But oh. <laughs> Okay, well, where, where is that anyway? Uh, it's in Egg Harbor. Oh, look at your little Instagram. Oh, okay. Look at your little Instagram. Yeah, yeah, oh, that sweet little boy. Is this, is this, look, a sweetie Petey. Just some rocks. Look at that. <laughs> what was up with this picture? Oh, it's opposite Ringing Rocks. Oh, okay. I don't know if you've ever been there yet. Yeah, there's like there's oh, all these asteroids they're like, that like, they're just metallic that sound like bells. You bring hammers with you. Oh. Where is that? Because I've heard of that. It's I never like, actually seen It's like North Jersey. No, it's like out, like out past Allentown. Oh, yeah. Okay, I know uh, that was always. Wait, wait, is that in New Jersey? Yeah, it's in PA. I thought I saw that in like weird New Jersey shit back in the day. Uh, you ever go on like a weird New Jersey tour? I love weird New Jersey. Yeah, dude, it was like it was the the whole reason that I had like day trips as a family. Yeah, in elementary schools. We bought my dad the weird New Jersey book. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to think what were some of the cool ones I saw. Do you, I you mean, go, there's that the the little mini town made of like. Uh, cartons in like Williamstown. Yeah. Okay. They have, like an entire like it's like I want to say it's like forty feet by fifty feet, and it's just like a scale model of Williamstown, but it's made out of like egg cartons and yeah. shit. Fucking and weird. There's, there's yeah. underneath the boardwalk in Wildwood. You can go there, get all your needles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You have. Uh, oh, there's a great tour. Uh, Camden at twelve a.m. That's always yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. it's always a good tour. Yeah, I actually I used to do a tour of Camden at twelve AM. It was called being the manager of a little Caesars <laughs> oh. in Camden. We were robbed on my first Hot. day as a manager. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's a hot location. Damn it, Ken <laughs> yes. Roth! I told you to be on top of this. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, nothing. I like. I'm just the most robbable person in the world. And they were like, hey. I could see that. They're like, Hey, Pete, do you want to be the GM of the Little Caesars on Mount Ephraim Avenue in Camden? And I was like, You betcha. Yeah. How the fuck did you even get that job? Uh, well, my dad is a kettle corn company, and I kind of fudged my resume to say that I was executive vice president of a kettle corn company. Yeah. No. <laughs> okay. You did. Yeah. There, there, yeah. there you go. I. No. Now I'm executive vice president of this podcast. Yeah. That's, what I'm <laughs> that's how you. That's how you do it. You yeah. Which make... I don't even get because I'm only fucking junior associate. No. I don't know. I, I don't understand corporate hierarchy in the slightest. Neither did I, but I have been sexually uh, harassing him. Neil, for have most you of it. have you looked into uh, my my paid time off? You said it was going to get some eventually. Hey, dude, you know we're we're looking into it. Okay, that's okay. really where we're at. We're going to get back to you. Probably check your email if you haven't already. Okay, okay. Right, I'll get into that. Gotcha. Um, uh, <laughs> PD worry, foul. No, nah, you're fucking right. wild. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we were just talking that'll about no Lyle. That'll make no sense. Yeah, that'll Fucking make no sense for people who don't know who Lyle my is. roommate and a fellow comedian who I'm sure is like, hey, you coming to the hip-hop show that's at our house later? <laughs> yes, I am Lyle. Yes. Uh, yes Lyle, Dave run Cave, and you live there now. Yeah, dude. And stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And Cave, they've been on uh, an episode, I think it's episode 137 of Nerds With Words. You can check them out and all the cool stuff they do. But they do hip-hop, uh, or at least music on Saturday. Yeah, Saturday nights we have, we have a concert. Temple location in Philadelphia. Yeah, 17th in Arlington. <laughs> Sunday, go. Sunday, Sunday. Yeah. Come oh, here. It's the bad. only safe place for blocks. Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. It's not bad. Oh, God. Anyway. Not wrong. Yeah. Yeah. So Pete is uh, newer to the comedy community, but very quickly into meeting him, found out we had a few things in common. For one thing, we were born at the same hospital. That we were. And uh, we believe we were circumcised by the same doctor. Who oh. fucked it up both times. <laughs> In different ways. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Very oh, yeah, different. Dude. I didn't know that. One, I forgot that yours was apparently botched. Yeah. Why do you think yours we're, we're, we're the yin and yang of foreskin. Hell, um, hell yeah, baby. So <laughs> Just like those heart <laughs> necklaces. <laughs> they just fit together. Okay, well, here, here is the context. So I already have a joke in my act about circumcision and being against circumcision. I did that at my first Philly's Funniest contest that my mother and my aunt were in the audience for. And uh, the whole thing is just like, ah, circumcision sucks. I can't feel anything and my dick looks weird. Um, afterwards, my aunt Karen comes up to me and says, Oh, I love that circumcision joke that they messed up your circumcision so much. You're like, wait, what? She says, Oh, your poor little thing. It wouldn't stop bleeding. I'm like, what? Yeah, no, like apparently they circumcised me and I screamed or whatever. And then like 30 seconds later, they came up to my mom and asked like, does anybody in your family have hemophilia? Which is where you can't stop bleeding. Yeah, no, that'd be wild. Yeah, so I have a, I have a little scar on the underside, and I needed stitches in my dick. Like, just... <laughs> I they, had, they, they leave that out of the really, like, romantic, spiritual, like, you know, with arms wide open, <laughs> welcome to <laughs> this world. Let me cut that off. <laughs> ah! Get my needle. Yeah, and I had I had the exact opposite problem uh, when I was circumcised by Doctor Jack Simmers of, yep. <laughs> of Belmar, New Jersey. Uh, uh, he didn't take enough off, so at one point it readhered when I was a small kid. And when I was sixteen and got my first like significant girlfriend, I had like a strip of skin go from the head of my dick to like the middle of the shaft of my dick. Mm. So I had to go get that cut off. They call that a cornholio syndrome, yeah. I believe. She was like, she was like, you know that when we fuck, that's going to rip. And I was like, you silly bitch. No, it's not. And then we fucked. And I was like, oh, my dick is definitely going to bleed if we do this again. Yeah. Uh, if, if there's ever a worse time for a girlfriend to give you, I told you so. so it's yeah. with your bleeding penis inside yeah. of her. Yeah, it was a good time. So I don't. It readhered. Yeah. It, I'm it, trying to. So are you. Wait. All right, do you have a <sighs> also, I thought the foreskin really what they're cutting is usually just towards the top. But how the fuck did the middle of your. Uh, okay. Do you want to draw it on the we have table? A, we have a visual okay. element. And then. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring it over here. So to the camera. This, mm-hmm. Good. Nice. This little schmackle right there. Yeah, see, that's that that's that's to say that's the regular dick. Okay. And this would be where your foreskin would be. Okay. okay. Well, hold on. Right. Do we have this on camera? Hold uh, it yeah, up yeah, to the yeah, camera. camera. Uh, it's a little too bright. Try to aim it. Up. Yeah, that one's there. Yeah, okay. there we go. So we got the dick. See that? It's a nice schmackle. For me, when since they didn't take enough off, I had something that looked like this. I'm zooming in. Piece of skin. Oh, okay, you had a, you had a fucking zooming in. Yeah, get, get a, right get a, get a suspender. Uh, yeah, fair, oh, yeah. I had like it was just like a strip of skin that was like your dick looked like an '80s skinhead with like yeah. the fucking suspenders. Yeah, pretty much. Oi, and, like oi, oi. they apparently my like 
I knew about this my whole life and this was what my dick looked like. Right. And no one ever said it was weird, but apparently my like pediatrician and mom had been having conversations throughout my childhood. Like whenever he starts jerking off, he's gonna rip it, it won't be a problem. Well, I don't know if wait. you've ever had a thing on your dick that's like subject. Wait, wait, that's what the pediatrician said. Yeah, the pediatrician Whenever he starts jerking off, he'll, he'll rip it. Rip it. He'll, he'll start rip spanking it and it'll, it'll take fine. care of itself. He's like, he'll take care of it. Well, then you just got, like, it's a weird flap that's just hanging. Well, no, because it would... You got, like, it's like someone left a sweater out of a car door. Yeah, pretty (laughs) much. (laughs) So they're like, oh, it'll rip, it'll be fine. And then, like, but I don't know if you've ever had a thing on your dick that you thought you could rip. But uh, you would try really hard not to rip your dick. Right. If if that's possible. I'd imagine So, so. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, so then when I was 16, I like went to the doctor. What's that like, pediatrician's Yo. name? Dr. Vinny Dr. Bobots? Dr. Jack Simmer. Uh, <laughs> oh, the same. Okay. <laughs> same doctor. So yeah, he, he, was like, he, he got paranoid from mine. Yeah. He started cutting less and less. Wait, yeah, he I fucked. thought pediatricians didn't. I didn't know pediatricians also cut your foreskin. Because that's the same guy? They do with the Cut your foreskin? Yeah, they do yeah. with the hand. They do with the guy. I'm out there yeah. fucking cutting for I also pictured your penis also in like any scene of some action movie where they get cut and then they have to go in and someone's got to sew the female. It's like, she's just like, hold tight. Ooh, it hurts a little. But your dick's just gotta, grizzled. It's gotta got a five o'clock the, shadow on the head. Yeah, yeah. Got to pull the oh, bullet yeah. out and it's just, right. uh, <laughs> just. Almost there. D- just think of that. Every fucking doctor at some point has had their first circumcision. Yeah. Sure. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You never know. No, I'm sure know. there's like a prat. You know, they probably take in like a pig's hoof, and like you know, they're like, all right, imagine their skin or something. <laughs> well, Got to do just, something yeah, there. Like they yeah, do for yeah. tattoo artists, or just, they make yeah. them like tattoo dead pigs. They first. got it. Oh, shit. Well, I, I've seen that. Oh, there was an old radio show where I remember they brought in like just a bag of like tiny fake baby penises that were like <laughs> to be exper like to you know practice circumcising. What? Yeah. Where were you? And what? What? I, I think it was Opie and Anthony because oh. I, remember, I think Jim Norton said something. And I'm like, mm, I just want to get them. All in my mouth, <laughs> right, like right, Uncle right. Paul. Well, Uncle could you Paul? could you imagine like going to like seminary no. and oh, trying sorry. to become like a, a rabbi, only to be told that like you've been selected to be the moil, mm. and then be like, no, I don't want to kiss kid dicks, and then they're like, well, Jesus picked you, <laughs> right? Like, yes, yeah, listen, they, 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 uh, every is. rabbi remembers the moment when Jesus calls to them. Let me tell you, <laughs> yeah. <that. laughs> well, this vocation yeah. is weird. <laughs> I heard a horn and then just a, a glowing p- little baby dick appeared in my dreams. <laughs> oh, I really am not comfortable with that. Do it again. Let's see. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you can see. Oh, no. Elmo. Miss, here we go. So, Mrs. Eckenroth, if you just take a look right here. Uh-huh. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> oh, see, he, he likes it. So if you see, if you just do this, a little bit, and then it'll rip a little. Just a little. I don't like having the camera on him when he's doing it because his tongue's out. It's like, like it's, it's disturbing. Oh, it's very disturbing. I just, am I the only one? Like, I can't do it. I know. I know. It's tough. It's all raspy. Anyway. So what's uh, what's your youth like, Petey? Are you got a you got brother, sister, parents Getting together? I have a, a younger brother named Eric. Fuck and that a guy. Younger si- Yeah, fuck Eric. Uh, and a younger sister named Emma. So Emma, she yeah. hot. Uh, she's 16, so I can't say so that for a couple of years. So the hottest. Okay, yeah, that's terrible. I'm yeah, sorry. no, you can, you can be the judge of that. It's fine. Okay. Yeah. I, would, I should do a camera shake every well. time. Like when I'm <laughs> shaking my head so the audience knows I'm not agreeing with why you would ask him. I've been, I've been of the opinion we should strap a GoPro to your forehead. <laughs> yeah. Is your yeah. sister hot? Is she? Oh, is she hot? She got little feet. <laughs> just, just asking little stuff. She got little fucking little feet. It's like, all right, Jesse. Uh, she's twenty five, so I don't know why you're being weird about it. Uh, anyway, I'm sorry. I yeah. see some little piggies in your kiss. <laughs> oh, dear, dear. Yeah. Uh, so parents together? Yeah, uh, my parents actually love each other too much. I'm convinced. It's kind of it's kind of irritating. How do they love each other? I don't know. Too they much. like they. Got together like in freshman English, like English. My dad was failing, and my, a perfect fucking word to fuck up. Continue. Yeah, my grandma uh, like hired my mom to be my dad's tutor, and then they started dating, Ooh. and they were like, "Oh, that backfired." There you go. Does she have little feet? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, well, my mom is very fat. But Mrs. Eckenroth, little little uh, little Roberts passing with flying. Yeah, colors. so now they're just that. they're just two fat people constantly reminding us how much mm. they love each other, and I'm like, you guys oh. could just get divorced. That's always an option. You know <laughs> that, right? Like you guys don't. Have to fake it this long. They're like, what do you mean? He's like, your father's my best friend. He's always been my. Th-. I'm like, God, I want to kill myself. Did she ever do any of that? Like, oh, look at the sexy man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's 
<laughs> Peter Apply. Griffin. That's like that's where you got it all, Petey. <laughs> <laughs> You've got your father's penis. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, uh, mm, no. Uh, 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 no, uh, no, I was, uh, yeah, that's something that to bring up too is that apparently my dad's got a little dick. Oh, I was told bless his heart. Uh, because I was if he's when big. I was when I was born, they were like I had like a a, a, a dick, and they were like, oh, well, that didn't come from me, and I was like, what? <laughs> And they're like, yeah, I don't know where that one came from. He just—he's a human being with an average size penis. <laughs> that I don't know. Maybe she had an affair. Oh, thank God! It skips <laughs> every generation. <laughs> yeah, I've been having—I've been having weird dick days lately. Where like, you're saying, dude. Where you know, it's just like some days it's like my standard, like you know, six and change. Like yeah, fucking average in the USA. And then some days it's like I woke up. Me and my I, uh, my girlfriend spent the night. We woke up. We had sex because I t- like taking advantage of morning boners. It's the hardest you're going to be all day right. for being truthful. Well, like, no, no, no. Here's the thing. It wasn't the hardest I was. It was a small hard. Like, it oh. was stiff, but it was like four, maybe. I don't know what it was. But I like morning boner sex because I feel like I get off quicker more than any other time of day. Really? Yeah, morning boner sex. It's fucking I like, have the opposite problem. There's just no feeling, and there's just no better feeling in the world than immediately waking up and then it commencing trying to nut. Like, sure. it's yes. like it's like it's almost feels like you ever just like get up on like early on a Sunday and you're like oh, I got chores to do and how like good that feels inside to get things done. <laughs> it's right. like that you wake up and you're like damn I'm hard already let's get going. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah sure, sure. It's, yeah. Also, it's it's a lot more fun when you can play with a friend. It's a, oh, yeah. it's, it's a oh, little yeah. more on the sad side and like oh, yeah. knocks you down. Have you noticed there's an energy discrepancy between whether it's a sex ejaculation or a masturbation ejaculation? Oh, hundred percent. Masturbation puts me like I'll, I'll get I'll get a little sleepy after sex, but I'll be fucking up and at him after five minutes. Masturbation, I am just like, oh, what the fuck am I doing? My life? What is what, what does YouTube say? How horrible a person I am, Gavin McInnes. Yeah, that sounds about right. Ugh. Okay. I'm just gonna I, sit in here. I, I should yeah, really I'm wipe this off my belly. Very different experience. This well, I, I have like oh. I'm having the issue of just realizing that like I I'm just not as horny as I ever thought I was. Like mm. at no point I would that I actually like I think I just wanted people to want to fuck me as opposed to like wanting to fuck because now that there are people that want to fuck I'm like yeah I don't I I'm mean, I'm just gonna play Lego Batman if that's cool with y'all <laughs> like it's cool you can come through I'll show me your titties if you'd like but there's no <laughs> Neil <laughs> no how's your here. how's your coming uh-huh. like Neil what how's, me what yeah, how's your coming uh, like dude it's superb it's just being it's a plus gold medal. Yeah, yeah, just bringing down the house with my ejaculation. Hell yeah, baby. Yeah, dude. There you go. Hell yeah, man. Got enough for the neighbors. <laughs> uh, Pete. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, what's your childhood like? You a happy kid? You a silly kid? You a sad I, kid? Uh, I was a relatively happy kid. Um, shit was weird. Okay, well, things were cool until I was like 10. And then shit started to hit the fan. A okay. Little bit. Uh, my my brother is like me- very mentally ill, oh. so like yeah, he's like they think he's like the super early onset schizophrenic. So yeah, okay. like, he's like thirteen, like started talking the ghosts and shit. Like, that is strange. Yeah. Schizophrenia doesn't usually metastasize at well, a young age. He's seen a therapist it does happen, since he was it, four, yeah. and they started oh. giving him bipolar meds super oh, early. Oh, bipolar. So you they can think get it. Early. it they yeah. think that giving him the wrong meds kind of like jump started oh, shit a little bit. Shit. <laughs> yeah. So like they, I remember the first time that they put him on Paxil. It was like August and like a hundred degrees out. Did they get to was, sue anybody? I'm sorry. Not, Keep no. going. They no. Put him on and they like put him like he was like had two snuggies on and was convinced that it was like going to start snowing outside and like talking the ghosts and like yeah. Jesus Christ! Yeah. It's like so. a car they've been putting like the wrong gas in for years. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's like someone who's been running on diesel. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's See, there's a good. there's a friend of the family who has a two kids and one of them started coming down with schizophrenia like right on the classic time like 23 24 25 no, that's when they say yeah and i remember uh, my stepdad god rest his soul um brought him like last christmas he stopped by my mom's house he's like oh yeah i have you know so and so in the car right now he uh he looked at me very intensely the other day and asked me if i was the devil I'm like oh and you're just keeping him in the car like a puppy while you come and visit your family yeah well you i know. mean Blue collar people can't deal with fucking mental illness, bro. Oh yeah, no. that's a very common thing. Of like now, it's probably the best time. A lot of blue collar families, I feel like, are like, "That's right, there's still science out there, so we'll just go and see what the doctors need us to do." Mm-hmm. But other than that, they're like, "We just lock him in a door, <laughs> we just lock him behind a door, and hope for the best, <laughs> and you know, hope he doesn't hurt anybody." Yeah, I mean, that's that was a, a large problem in my house. Was like my dad, who is 
uh, who was a drunk for a significant part of my childhood as well. Mm. Uh, like when he got his cell, his shit together, he was like, oh, what do you mean you guys don't have your shit together? Uh, oh, you mean he's a crazy person? I didn't even know this was going on for a while there. Like, and then him just being like, you mean I have to stop being a dick to the kid who doesn't understand that I'm not right. being a dick? That's uh, crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. gotta be great. And he's yeah. younger than you? My, yeah, uh, my brother is three years younger than okay. me. You're the yeah. oldest. I'm the oldest, yeah. Okay. How did that... Yeah, that, that must affect you in a weird... What was he like uh, before... What was this... All, you said this was always kind of there a little bit. He's he's always been violent, and he's always been, like, just Got overly it. aggressive. Yeah. Okay. And then, like, it wasn't until, like, he started to get a little older that it was like, oh, he he genuinely thinks that, like, people are telling him to do bad right. things. Right. <laughs> okay, so at first it started out as aggression, but then it became clear, like, oh, there's, like, bad messages getting to him. Yeah, I mean, within two days of him learning how to walk, he hit me with a Little League bat on top of the stairs. Oh, dude, my, wow. my guy is a fucking straight gangster. He's a fucking gangster. <laughs> yeah. And my parents are like, oh, we have a, an they're like, oh, we have a crazy violent kid. How about we just put him in wrestling from three years of okay, old that's forward? Okay. No. So he's an all-conference wrestler and a crazy uh, person. So that that it, that started to backfire a little later. I mean, I, I, I understand trying to find a positive in it. <laughs> I, so do I. But they were like, oh, he was like, hey, can I do karate? And they're like, no, let's do wrestling. I'm like, oh, you mean the one that's a practical skill you want him to? Right. Great. Right. Great. <laughs> Yeah, there's nothing like being pinned by a guy who's like, oh, dude, when I get out of here, I'm gonna fucking fuck these snowflakes. I'm gonna fuck these fucking <laughs> goddamn so Did you and him in ever get in fights? Like, oh, I, well, it backfired because I didn't fights? realize that he was legitimately crazy no, until no, 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 fairly no, no, no. recently. Because, because the older brother, I beat up on my little brother. I used to quite beat the shit out of my brother, and then he became uh, the same height and weight as me, except, and where I have chub, <laughs> he has muscle, and he <laughs> has a skill set that I don't have. Yeah, he's got. Yeah, you know. he kicks all of our asses. There's no one in my house that can't that can beat him up anymore. Like, he beats ever, the shit out of my dad. He beats the shit out of. They should have got him into like gymnastics. He was in the gymnastics, <laughs> and they told him he was too. They told him he was too fucking ADHD That's for a gymnastics. Okay, well, then you put. <laughs> they just, were like, he's, he, too he's just he's tuning out in the middle of a backflip. Right. Like, all right, fuck this. Yeah, no, they like they put him on the. He would just spin on like the 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 fucking oh, the rings, on, uh-huh. the rings. He would just spin for like hours. Right. Well, yeah, and they were like, sense. yeah, this kid's too hyper, and they're like, I think this is precisely where he should be yeah dude it he sounds, just comes yeah i mean this morning i was amped up i was like I, I, I did work out did my spanish worked out <laughs> <laughs> hey man someone's got to be learning something did my spanish worked out but i got out and i was in traffic dude i was angry Brittany's like oh it's gonna be one of these trips oh this is bad like i was like i was like oh fucking everyone sucks like i'm <laughs> so angry in philadelphia uh but i was like i gotta breathe you gotta calm down a little too much road rage. Now imagine that, but you think like the CIA is after you and they've been right. drugging you for years. Right. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Okay. Oh no, no, good. No, I got no. no keep, keep going. Uh, okay. I was gonna say this is very early to throw to video, but one of the videos I found specifically has to deal with some uh, brothers who aren't getting along. If you could go to the fight compilation one. It's queued up on it right there. Uh, I found this on World Star. There's a big compilation. I found two videos within this video. But I love this video that starts here. We're, we're starting on a very badly beaten man. But yes. rest assured, he absolutely deserved it. Awesome. Um, Fantastic. Okay. But the I'll vi- take your word for it. The, the clip after this I love so much because it's two brothers getting into it. And it starts out. It's like grown men. But it starts out like brother, little brother trying to annoy you. Right, if we could just play that clip real quick. Let me, let's see if there's any sound. Yeah. yeah there. Oh, boy. <laughs> You're just saying deja vu over and over again. I've been to this neighborhood. No. Yeah. Yeah. Spit with the left. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this happened before. And the fact that he comes back, like, uh, maybe I shouldn't. Uh, okay, so that's it. That's it for that. Oh, God. It is oh, fun. Was, that looks like every fight. fight I've ever been in. I am that guy. Right there? <laughs> yeah, I just I start just hammer fisting for a little bit. And then... <laughs> hammer fisting, windmill. Uh, so, Neil, while we have that up, we don't need to play that right now, but if you could just cue that up to 1214. Okay. And we'll get to that one a little bit later. Gotcha. Um, what's school like for you? Well, actually, well, before we get too far away from that, so do you have like any relationship with your brother? Or oh how? yeah, yeah, he's he's pretty cool. Okay. At this point, uh, he started smoking weed though, so I think that's a large portion of that. 
was he was like, yeah, I'm just going to not be mean to people. I'm going to play TF2 and smoke weed. And I'm like, that sounds like a perfect plan. Whatever. Okay, yeah. that works out. So what's uh, what's school like for you? It's okay. I hate school. Yeah. But I, uh, I barely graduated high school and then did pretty good in community college. Remind me what high school you went to. Triton. You went to Triton, I too. went to Triton Regional High School, class 2016. Oh, oh yeah. Right. God. Also, I mean, do, it's saying you're doing well in community college, but it's not. I mean, I don't know what you want us to say. Oh, well, no, no. I, I go to Temple now. I know. Uh, but, yeah, there no, I, you go. I graduated high school with a 2.3 GPA and got my associates with a 3.7. And I was like, I'm not going to keep going to school, Mom. And she was like, your bitch ass is going to keep going to school. We didn't think you – we thought you were going to join IATSE. And now you, and now you can go to college. What's IATSE? So, what? That's the Stage Hands Union. Oh. Yeah. They were like, oh, we thought you were going to join a union, and now you're oh. – you can go to gotcha. school, so you should do that. Oh. And I was like, fuck Wait you. Wait a second. Did I ask you this before if you knew my brother? Because I think he was 2015. Luke, yeah. Luke Lynch? That's super familiar. I don't know. If I, could, if I saw the name, I Trenton's would. Trenton's a pretty big school, face. right? It's okay. It, it's I graduated in, like class like 400 people, I yeah. guess. It, it only pulls from like three towns. But yeah. yeah. Oh, five. Woo. Hell yeah. Wow, this is depressing. All right. Why don't we? <laughs> but oh, I mean, yeah. so high school, you're, you're not a great student. Uh, but yeah. how does that how does that actually like happen for you? Were you not attentive? Were you getting into trouble? I I had a problem where like my my so my mom's a librarian so she was like always thought that, like us being intelligent was important and like I was sure. able to read in preschool and like okay. all that stuff. So like I didn't really pay attention to school until like seventh grade, okay. mm. and then by that point I had done enough not paying attention that there was uh, no way that I was ever going to be on the same page as anybody else yeah, ever again. Yeah. Oh, okay. Where it was just kind of like I I'm down with history. Like I got that pretty well And the English was pretty good But like there's Math was just Not happening Yeah gotcha. Math I, uh, I The big problem I always have Is like I never fully grasped What we were doing Well actually I was fine with math Until we got to algebra Because yeah. once algebra Got like Advanced And as soon as we got geometry And you had to like Graph everything I was just fucking done I, I didn't care for it Shove your z-axis up your asshole. I want nothing to do with it. Oh, we had I had so many problems with math because like freshman year I got a I got a B in algebra one. I'm like okay that's not great but it's fine. Mm. Second year I got an A in geometry so they bumped me up into accelerated algebra two huh. and then got a 35 for the year. <laughs> and I was they were like yeah that uh, that was the wrong move. <laughs> <laughs> Our bad. That's on us. Teacher uh, council just sitting around. We might have gone too far yeah. with Pete. We might need to walk him back. Yep. And um, then I had the same teacher again the next year for accelerated algebra two again. What was the teacher? Uh, Ms. Millicent Coppola. <laughs> That's a great. I don't know who that is. That's a great fucking name. She got ramen noodle hair. Uh, <laughs> she's a ho- horrible teacher. Wonderful woman. Yeah. I was yeah, when I was gonna fail the second time. She was like, "Fuck it. I'm just gonna make you pass." And I was like, "I love you, millionaire." <laughs> Did you ever have despite a, having noodle hair? You're a hero. You are a delight to me. <laughs> Did you ever have Mrs. Winch while you were there? Oh, fucking Mrs. Winch is a G. I she love follows Mrs. me on Winch. Twitter. She like she you know, she's a best selling author now. What? She had she wrote a book about like farm to table things. Like, Natalie Winch. Yeah, a couple years ago. Uh, w i n c h. Yeah, yeah dude. She was. Uh, uh, is that? I don't know. We might be talking about different teachers because I don't think it's a. Uh, that's definitely her. Yeah. Yeah, now they went just food empowerment blog. Ditching yeah. the drive through. Ditching the drive through. That's what it is. Yeah. How to pass up your. Uh, sorry, how to, how to pass up processed foods. No. Oh. Yeah, it's like French farm to table. Your family. So there you go. Cool. Yeah. Uh, my, my favorite story with her was uh, it was freshman year. The entire class was supposed to be reading Of Mice and Men. And as she was walking through, she saw I was reading something else. She said, Well, what are you reading? Like. Brothers Karamazov, and she took her stack of papers and hit me on the head and said, "You're too fucking smart for this class. Why are you here?" Yeah, and I told her I always had a problem with English teachers because every time we had to write something, I wouldn't follow the rules. I would get carried away in like writing something. And the first time I did it, she's like, "Okay, you uh, followed none of my instructions, but it's too good to give anything less than a B. I understand why you're not in advance. Like, exactly, <laughs> but nah." Mrs. Winch, she's fucking yeah, G. Winch check out, awesome. check out her book. I actually think that the worst teacher I had in Triton also was class Triton class of 2005. So I don't know. Do you know Bob Wankel? Bob Wankel. <laughs> He's now the baseball coach at Triton, but he is like. Wait, the, was he? Was he? Were you there? There was a big sex scandal uh, at that our That was school. my freshman year. The okay. uh, Martinelli, the gym teacher. I was in his class when he got arrested. Like he got arrested during my gym period. Okay, so yeah, what what happened? Wankel. 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 I don't come on. Uh, so what happened is a few years ago, a bunch of people who had been in my class, who'd gone on to become teachers, had in turn come back to the school to teach and promptly started fucking 17-year-olds. Yes. Three of them at the same time, and they were all in cahoots with each other. 
Oh wow! Uh, yeah, and what uh, other fun fact? One of the one right. of the par- I, I don't recognize Wankel, but we have like forty mutual friends. One of the so. parents. Yeah, yeah. One of the the parents of one of the girls is a uh, science teacher at Highland. Oh God! <laughs> and he was my little league baseball coach. So it was Look just like at the funniest these shit. White devils. Yeah. <laughs> also, I was supposed to have all three of them my freshman year <laughs> for just our audio. Two listen, of them though. never showed up to school. <laughs> Or busy wow. courting girls at candy yeah. stores. Uh, three teachers from Trey in regional high school in Ronald Meade, New Jersey, have been arrested accused of having inappropriate sexual relations with three female students. Yep. Uh, won't say their names. Who cares? But these are bad guys. Went to guys. school with all of them. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're all garbage. And one of them is now married to a current teacher at Triton. Really? By the really? way, yeah. Okay. See, uh, the, the big shot in front of that for me was uh, my vice principal all through high school was Mrs. Kelleher. Okay. And uh, she got married, and her her name was different, but I'm sure you probably had her. Uh, she went down with them because she tried to protect these guys. Oh, uh, was it the 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 principal principal at the time, or was it the uh, the black woman? Because I it wasn't had, the black woman. She, she might had, no. She, my my vice principal might have been promoted to principal. Oh, because she, she was my she was one of my sit my mom's teachers. Okay, like when so, it was was the principal who went down. Yeah. Okay, but, so you guys uh, done gabbing about your dumb bullshit. Like high school crap that no one gives a fuck about, or are we gonna get into fucking okay. topics here? Let's get into fucking topics. Well, here. How okay, fuck? how many teachers have touched you, Pete? Yeah, please. how many Thank you. teachers have somewhere. touched me? Uh, none. But when I worked at Produce Junction when I was seventeen, there was a thirty-two-year-old who tried to diddle me. Yeah, there you yeah. Go. Holy Wait, shit, lady. Yeah. Yes, it was a lady. Okay. Wow. Yeah, she tried to entice me back to her home every day to smoke weed with her after my shift, which is, of course, I'm a seventeen-year-old. Could she just mm-hmm. been a lonely pothead? Uh, well, she was trying to the jerk. Hey, listen, the I'm not blaming the victim. She was jerking man. the gherkin. That's she all I'm was, saying. Oh, oh you, you went through with it. What? Are you making it seem like I'm She's not going 17. to? Yeah, I'm 17. I'm 17. Mm-hmm. Like an old ass, little, I mean, a grown woman is like, hey, <laughs> let me touch your dick. And I was like, sick. He's this only is tight. 17. <laughs> Just stop yeah. hogging it. I don't 17. know why you're hogging <laughs> You guys are so good at putting away those cucumbers that you had. <laughs> She knows just how to grab it at the right base. Yeah. Well, for some reason, he always had a cucumber, but always had a little patch towards the top on one end. It was just, he would take a piece of chicken skin and try to make it look like his. <laughs> oh, God. Flappy. Uh, that's, 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 that's Produce Junction at the Brooklawn Circle. Well, I mean, um, that's Produce what? Junction on uh, Blackwood Clementon Road. Okay. What, Clementon. I'm, what I'm wondering, because I mean, when you talk about, so when you were 10, stuff started to get weird. That was about your brother. And stuff. But it, I felt like you were one of those kids just like me who was like, to a certain point, it was kind of idyllic. Like you're, you're kind of coming up. And then at a certain point, like kind of the world starts opening up. And then you just start to get up into kind of like some situations. I don't know, like a 17-year-old going home with a 32-year-old to get a Yeah, where job. I was just like, what the <laughs> fuck is going, going on, on here? Right. Like, yeah, I mean, I, I think I Which, hit like... That area of New Jersey is like, yeah, a lot of spots are 100%. There's like just dirty stuff going on yeah, all the time. And it's, like, and it's a lie. Like, they make it seem like they're like, oh, we're living in the suburbs. It's so cool. I know more mm-hmm. shady shit that was going on in Lindenwald, New Jersey, than I have witnessed in the month and a half that I have lived in North Philly. Oh, yeah, no, it really well, is like David Lynchian like... Like, no, there's shit going on underneath yeah, here. You don't even have to look that hard anymore. It's wacky. Dude, it's, we used to get right. some, we used to fucking party with our bus driver who was like a metalhead born again <laughs> Christian. And we just get like fucking blazed. It was crazy. He would play my demo tapes on the fucking bus, man. <laughs> Just poor kids listen to Dude, first gotta, rate thrash metal. Gotta be honest, this thrash is killer. You know what's even better? Jesus Christ. That's right. <laughs> there's there's a teacher at Triton whose name I'm not going to Boy, name on the podcast Christian who metal. I have on good authority as a Coke plug. You need <laughs> to tell well, me afterwards. I will tell you after. You don't do Coke. No, I don't. Oh, no, I'm just for, teacher. You just I don't do. I don't, I don't do coke yeah, either. You're not enough guy. Yeah. No, I, well, I, 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 yeah. I'm immediately going to text my aunt and ask if she knows about this because she was uh, she was Mr. Stahl's secretary for like oh, years and years. Really, she retired. Trump Interesting. Shit. So, Mr. <laughs> did you know Mr. Stahl's son is like a in-house sub for Triton? What are you guys doing? A fucking okay. no. He he was this on American a newsletter Idol. for Triton High School. This is South Jersey education. No, he, was, he was on American Idol like two seasons ago. Oh, yeah. He like oh really? Yeah, he made it to like the top thirty. He didn't make it to like the live voting rounds okay yeah. i got you yeah, you guys, cool. Triton actually is at one of those schools i mean we had a little scandal but i mean like when this stuff happens Triton's a bigger school 
mm. th- definitely bigger than ours. So when it happens in our school, they're like, oh, see, so so where'd you tiny go? little, tiny little Catholic school in Hamilton. So when it happens in those tiny you, wait, little did you go to there's only St. Joe's? Only one. Or did yeah. you? Oh, yeah. I got a funny story about a St. Joe's girl. You keep but we'll... fucking St. Joe's out of your mouth, dude. <laughs> Say some shit about St. Actually, I don't give a shit. Um, and St. Joe's 100% had a lot of, yeah, the same thing. Well, I thought I got herpes from a girl from St. Joe's, but she actually gave me a staph infection on my dick. What? What the fuck does that Wait, happen? I thought, are you able to... <laughs> I didn't know you could even trans. Oh, I guess you can transmit well, uh, a staph infection. It's blood. Girl had a cyst on in her oh. pussy, and I was like, "Let me fuck you." And then she was like, "Sick." And then I was like, "Bitch, you gave me herpes." And then she's like, "Boy, you got a dirty dick." And then <laughs> I got a text from her like two weeks later. I was like, "You should still like go to a doctor and get yourself checked I'm- out." And she goes, "Yikes, my bad." And I was like, "What?" And she's like, "Yeah, there was like a huge cyst apparently." And I was like, "Great." This is great. I just want all of that to be verbatim. (laughs) Bet you got a dirty (laughs) tip. Like, just verbatim. It was pretty verbatim. How did you get MRSA in your pussy? Well, it wasn't MRSA. It was a staph infection. If it was a MRSA, if if it was MRSA, I would... That would kill you. Yeah, my dad had MRSA. That was sick. I I had had a little... You had MRSA, too? My dad had MRSA, yeah. My dad uh, dad was an iron worker, and he uh, he got a a bypass surgery when I was in, like, third grade. So I guess that's when shit hit the fan, really. Mm -hmm. He had, like, a quadruple bypass. And when he went back to work afterwards, like, 15 people from the job site got MRSA. And, like, my dad had it in the cavity from, like, when he got his, like, heart operation. Yeah, so he was in the hospital for, like, six weeks. Like right after he got out of the hospital yeah. for like three weeks, getting a trip, a quadruple bypass. For, for those people who don't know what MRSA is, pretty much uh, due to overuse of uh, um, antibiotics, antibiotics, <laughs> there are now bacterial infections that regular bio- antibiotics don't kill. Yeah. So yeah, it's, they like have uh, to like effectively like skim your blood to find all of it. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I, dude, I know a few people. Luckily, I'm a hypochondriac, so I got mine checked out and lanced right away. But I have some friends who like had to get like. Had to get their shoulders scooped out to get all the infection. Oh no! I, that's why. So I, it's a form of Staphylococcus. Staph. Yeah, it's yeah. a form yeah, of it's staph, a staph infection. But yeah, um, Ganchy. Yeah, no. That I, I, I did what any. I think uh, I was like nineteen when this happened. I did mm-hmm. what any nineteen year old will do, and I was like, okay, well, if these things are still on my dick in a week. I'm going to go to a doctor. Mm-hmm. And then within three days, I had had like two of them on my arm as well. And I was like, it's time to figure out <laughs> yeah, whatever's yeah. going on with this. If they <laughs> already made the commute from your dick to your bicep, that's yeah. a little bit. I was like, yeah, it's time to figure out. Uh, right. I mean, yeah, you basically answer. <laughs> when you wait like that, it's, you know, any of those uh, those uh, <laughs> history programs where the map changes, you're like, your dick is now overrun with red. <laughs> it's moving. You're like, yeah, and you're like, like <laughs> shit, we were a little late here. It's about yeah, to take the, the head. I'm, I'm seeing the, the storm is coming in. I'm yeah. watching the radar. Are and it's, <laughs> it's not good. time to get shelter in, in an urgent care. <laughs> Herpes on the stone. <laughs> Herpes on my well, balls. Well, yeah. One of your nuts is just a, one well, of the like, Florida guys who stay. <laughs> we're weathering the storm, fellas. <laughs> I'm not moving. It's like you're yeah you're overrun with fucking staff, but you've been through uh, some weird shit. You got oh, some yeah. weird stuff yeah, already. Yes, yeah, weird shit. So down. you got out of high school alive, barely passing. Yeah. Through that, was there any um, relationships? What, were, what was oh, the love I, life? You you're, talking, you're talking a lot of fucking and not a lot of not a lot of caring. Oh, I uh, yeah. actually I had the same girlfriend for all of high school. Oh, uh, yeah. Her name is Jess. She's well. Then she's who the fuck cool. gave you staff? Uh, this girl named Emily. That was before this high was, school? Uh, this was actually the first time I did a music festival with Tyler and Cody. Oh, this is much later. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, this was, uh, yeah, I was, uh, I just started doing stand up and gotcha. uh, drank, chugged a, a fifth of uh, whipped cream burnettes. What is wrong Ooh. with you? And then uh, <laughs> went on a quest to eat rice and eat ass. Right. Um, which uh, your boy was successful Together. in. Together. So it was pretty nice. tight. There you um, go. I like to yeah. put the rice in a bowl next to the butt and then just go oh, you in just, between. So you, I go half you, and half. It's spicy ricey. What you got to do is yeah, you got to yeah. take a, a prime booty. Okay. Okay. And then just a bowl of white rice as much as you could possibly fit. Right. And then douse that shit in Louisiana hot sauce. Oh, okay. And then just eat some ass and then just fucking go get over there. Yeah, fucking yeah. clean your palate. Yeah. yeah. I, like, <laughs> I like to eat as Indian style. Just like enough. <laughs> you kind of share it. <laughs> dip a little naan in it. Racist. Mm-hmm. Racist. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Yeah, I'm more, yeah, you know, only, more to eat ass if you sit like uh, sitting pretzel legged on a sofa, <laughs> like <laughs> uh, crisscross applesauce. Um, I always like um, uh, the Japanese style because there's always some place to put your. Um, Dick. I don't want to do the rest of that. <laughs> no, I was no, like, it's okay. No, no, it's okay. Neil, I believe in you. You can put yeah. your chopsticks in the butt. <laughs> that's the sh- what? The, to, that's what you fucking yeah. That's, that's really what we decided on to here. hold them. 
Uh, I wouldn't expect her. If there's chopsticks in her butt, how are you eating her butt? I just that seems like a logistical issue. You're right. It should be in her. Never mind. All right. Yeah. Let's just move on. Uh, this it's is gonna you can sheath him right there. <laughs> yeah. What are we doing here? There you go. Just put it. Just put a little wasabi in there. A little ginger, and then. Just, I don't put him on the filthy ground at this festival. I mean, I got a, <laughs> someplace sanitary. Yeah. So yeah. wait, you had the long-term girlfriend. Now was that? Were you like very emotionally connected? Oh yeah. Yeah. How? Uh, all right. What's up? A way I I don't know. Did I met her? Uh, she actually met her in my yard. I had a bonfire, and a friend that I worked at Boy Scout camp was like, "Hey." I have a friend who I think you'll, you'll like. I'm going to bring her to your house. And I was like, sick. They mm-hmm. let you work with the Boy Scouts? I'm an Eagle Scout. With your fucking... Oh, shit. Yeah. That's right. I forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, I'm an Eagle Scout. Uh, with his history? That, that, that means you have a higher propensity of becoming a serial killer. That's yeah, awesome. it also means if I wanted to join the military, I would start at E3 as yeah, opposed to E1. Right. Uh, so, you're an extra 17 grand a year. That is true. Did yeah. neither, none of those things you're going to do. But No, neither of those things. Do you think I can yeah. get in the military now? Or Obviously be a serial not. killer. I think I'm, you're too. I'm too adorable. <laughs> yeah, like, that's true. It's hard. Like, yeah. Yeah, your name would be the cute serial killer. Yeah, <laughs> if, like, I was, if I was, yeah, if I was hot, I could kill he people. He kills them while doing I, Elmo I'm voice. I'm cute. And that's the problem. <laughs> yeah. Hot um, people can be serial killers. Yes. Cute guys can be like, oh, he, he probably knows jokes. <laughs> <laughs> He right. lulls them with his eyes. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Well, all right, so you meet the girl at the bonfire. I meet a girl at the bonfire, and then uh, we just <coughs> hit it off, and she just came to my house every day for three and a half years after that. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, That's how it works. That's how it goes. Yeah, yeah but I found I'm out not. later that it was a friend who like had, had the hots for this girl and was trying to like set her up with dudes that she he thought were doofuses uh, so that she would realize that he was the guy for ooh, her. That's a bad tactic. And then tactic. that backfired immediately, and he stopped being my friend like immediately. Good. That's like a rom-com version of Dinner for Schmucks. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's like pretty much. Really dumb. Yeah. I, I, that does sound just like super fake television bullshit. Like, why would you think that actually works in real life? Oh, well, no, I, 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 I understand. Skills. I understand. Wait, hold on. I have to hear what Jesse's about to say. What do you mean I understand? I understand getting a little caught up in like what media has told you about fucking oh, relationships well, and how sure. you're a fucking idiot. Mm. I, forget, right. I forget who said it, but somebody said, really made the point. Like, you have to understand the reason that like the nerd guy always beats out the jock for the hot girl is that these movies are written by fucking dorks who never got pussy. I just like believed it. Like, no, nah, it could totally happen. I don't know. I don't think that any of that's right. I think that we the hero story is always the morally good one, and that that's just what we've told ourselves in America. But anyway, I, well, I get what yeah. you're saying. I'm, I'm, only, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about my own microcosm having. You know, being unaware of the history but I guess of so. media. If it, if it is like a Weinstein age. production, yes, it's always like, yeah, <laughs> the guy who you don't think would be able to get the girl, but he's figured out that he's real funny, and then he gets yeah. the girl, and yeah, it's real bad. Sorry, we gotta stop. I gotta, I gotta keep this thing on the how did track. That, uh, so how that how that end? Oh, uh, she went what? to college at Rutgers, New Brunswick. Yeah, and wait a second. I was like, why? You, I don't want to do this anymore. You jumped like right sick. to the end. What, what are some of the first? I mean, was she the first one you yes. made a sweet lawy? Yes, I uh, lost my virginity on uh, Ash Wednesday of 2014, I believe. <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, we were going to go to church, and then we were like, fuck it, let's just try fucking. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it was sick. And then uh, afterwards, we went to my mom's house and we had BLT salad. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. It, it would have been way better had you actually gone to church and you lost your virginity both with fucking soot on your forehead. That'd be hilarious. That no, but I do spend a lot of time camping, so I'm sure there was a lot of time there was soot on <laughs> my forehead. It's real fucked up, though, because hers is all rubbed off. <laughs> she just hit it from behind her head's in the pillow or something. <laughs> It's like, why are hers really, really rubbed off? It's ashes like to were... ashes, nuts to nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Is that just Rick and Morty? That's so perfect. Oh, so I perfect. Trying, Rick. I, I know, yeah, so perfect. That's a duck. Uh, Rick, come on. I'm um, sorry. Is that a Primus song? song? Yeah, I think yeah. it's a Primus song. <laughs> yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, that was very strange for me. Sorry, I was trying to slip into Morty, but it did not work out. Or uh, Anyway, um, so okay, that was the first for you. That's big. Yeah. So and you did that. Are we talking, wait, Ash Wednesday, 2014? So you I graduated. was 16, yeah. Okay. I was a sophomore. Yeah, yeah. Really. Do you have a little friends group? Do you have like friends in high school that kind of stuck with you, or you? Um, who'd you I roll mean, with? my social life in high school for the most part Get it was, together was uh just hang out with the girlfriend. But like, I don't know, I had like a core group of friends. Like, I did the right. musicals and it was in choir and boy scouts. Oh. So like, I had a I had a group of of like built in friends that like I just were the boy scouts always a bunch of. I always had these two things. It was like you know they always get played as these uh, these goody two shoes. Well, the problem is is that we had like the boy scouts have that like image 
So what happens is people send their bad kids to the Boy Scouts to be good kids, and then they just make all of us just worse kids. Mm. So it's like, yeah. Like I, they're like, oh, you're a Boy Scout. You're like a pussy. And I was like, man, I've been stabbed six times. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean? Like, I mean, how many times have you been stabbed at baseball practice? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, the, I'm, I'm the square, dude. Let me tell yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize that they were sending like it was like that would to basically like prison like an early an early reform camp pretty much yeah I mean and that's the problem like a lot of Boy Scout camps that really is how they make extra money is oh, by shit. like sending like one year I working was, with disgruntled not disgruntled yeah no youth. we were at a, I was at a, a Boy Scout camp in in Maryland for, we're outside of Baltimore called Camp Saffron and they uh they like half of the camp was just like juvenile detention centers that were sending kids for like a week to camp oh, and shit. it was atrocious <laughs> <laughs> it was so bad. What's like Camp yeah. Saffron? Te- teaching future criminals how to survive on the lam, I guess. We want them to have practical ways yeah. to survive. You know yeah, what I, I mean? mean? If they're, they're are... already going to stab it, they might as well know how to sew. <laughs> there, are, there are important skills that, like... Like, I understand the value in it, and, like, it was definitely an important thing for me, and, like... <coughs> it was, definitely. like, the, truly the only social consistent in, like, my, my life okay. until... I mean, I, I started in Cub Scouts when I was six, and then stayed up until... I actually went to a Boy Scout meeting on the day before my 18th birthday. Gotcha. And I was like, I yeah, I rocked it as long as I could. And then, Darkest thing that happened. I mean, were you really stabbed when you were yeah, a Boy Scout? Yeah, I've been stabbed several times as a Boy Scout, yeah. Was it just... <laughs> where? Yeah. Are we talking poking? Uh, oh, I, I mean, enough that like I, I have... Uh, like I had that get some butterfly bandages. <laughs> what, did, what, what did you do to deserve to get uh, stabbed? It was one friend of mine uh, several times. His name was Stab Mike. His name was Delaney. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, he he's actually recently came out as gay since we got done Scouts, which explains a whole lot. Why, why he might have been so right. Why he, he was so he, stabby. He wanted, he wanted to penetrate everyone and he this is the only way he could express yeah, himself. No, we were like Jesse. playing kill the man with the ball though, and he just like, you know, when you get tackled and kill the man with the ball, you let sure. go of the ball. Sure. This motherfucker just wasn't doing it. So I just picked him <laughs> up. He was a little guy and he's pulled a pocket knife out of his pocket, and stabbed me in the stomach. And then I was like, well, I mean that it uh, I don't appreciate the way he went about it, but I it was successful for what he was trying to attain. It's like he just lay on the ground, fucking dude. It's like you're a I, dick. I like, I like your stride, man. That was, that was real boss. Uh, Showed a lot of hustle out there. Oh god, I think they had the liver. You call one of the eagle pieces of shit to come get me. Uh, just bring out a little cart. Uh, I am not funny today. I can feel it in my bones. <laughs> um, I can, I'm surprised you guys. It's, it's funny. I can hear it in your voice. Yeah, too. I can you? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Hi. How are you? How you in doing? Your bones. It's a nice thing. Beat a man when he's down. Um, wow. So you're getting stabbed. That's fun. Uh, no, but I, I like that uh, through all this. So up until you're 18, Eagle stabbed. You got some friends going on. High school girlfriend the whole time. Yeah. She goes away. How was that breakup? Like, now I want to know, like, how did um, that? Was it? Was, it, it we stayed together. You for looking a, at her and waving, you know, while she, like, uh, in the back of a car, you know, at the window. <laughs> and she's like, Bye. <laughs> no, it just like kind a Garfield of, it cat slowly, sadness. It just slowly devolved into effectively her just not realizing that like she had to continue putting effort into making this work when I was still in high school and oh. like she was you know, mm. going to college and I was just, like, oh, so. Was there an expectation that you were going to stay together? Yeah, we had every intention of making it work, and oh. then like she just she'd come home for Christmas. Maybe she's not going then, far. She said Rutgers. Yeah, Rutgers, New Brunswick. Mm-hmm. Though oh. I, I'd also you know I I wasn't even seventeen the way that the our eight our she's like a year uh, older than me. Right. But the way it worked out was that like I was sixteen when she turned eighteen and moved to college, and then I didn't turn seventeen oh, yeah, until like two months later. Uh. So it just kind of. Yeah, the time. So what was the contact out. like at that point? Like, were you? Uh, we were talking all the time, but it just wasn't. It yeah. just got to a point where you could I, hear the I dick realized, in her mouth while you were talking. Well, no, it was, uh, yeah, I got to the point where I was like, oh, I could just be having sex with people that I want to have sex with and not be waiting for this girl that I, I like enough, sure. but like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, at that point, like we were together for like three and a half years. And at that point, I was like, I don't think I'm going to be marrying this mm-hmm. this girl. I don't, <laughs> this fair maiden. Yeah, I don't. I don't think this is it. Like this was this gotcha. was sick. This was a good first time for everything. And like, so, you know, to to know how to be in a successful relationship. Huh. So you, you had a very not the healthy adult perspective on it. Yeah, no, and me and her are pretty good friends now. It just it wasn't yeah. meant for us to be. You no, know, that's good on that wave. So jumping off of that, being in a relationship for that yeah. long. What was that like? Like now you're like oh, a little uh, free boy. I then dated a really hot girl after that, who I was never able to get a boner <laughs> while dating. <laughs> oh god! So I uh, yeah, I was all emotionally shook up after oh, that, where shit. I was like, I just I had 
but you're not Sarah. <laughs> no, but here's what my, my thing was that like I, I had a very hard time disconnecting me being attracted to people and me having like romantic feelings for people. Like I was like, oh, I don't want to fuck people that I don't love. That's crazy. And then oh, I was like, nothing wrong with and that. And then I was like, oh, but no, I definitely do now. <laughs> well, but then I was like, no, I can't. Sound a little do that. psychopathic, but <laughs> I was like, I can't do like, this. Listen, yeah, but I mean, okay, so you, but in love, like you, you thought you had to be in love yeah, with her. I thought that I was like, oh, I can't, I can't be pulling any moves right. until we've gone like, on just because I, yeah. I haven't even met your dad yet. I mean, right. Yeah, you and your yeah, your dad and I need to play ball in the yard first. Mm -hmm. We have to have a Thanksgiving yeah. where at least someone makes a racist joke. Like we got to do some steps. I get yeah. it. Yeah, and then like uh, after after that shit all worked out, I was like, hey, like we're fucking. Does that mean I'm your boyfriend? And she was like, no, I just I just like hooking up with you. And I was like, but I like I'm like I like you. Like, I just want to be your boyfriend. Why can't I be your boyfriend? And then my uh, my first car was an '84 Monte Carlo, and it blew up going to see her on 295 because she lived in Swedesboro. Uh, and at that point, I was like, fuck this bitch. I'm done. She don't fucking love. <laughs> Very unique how the environment yeah. changes as soon as yeah as soon a tool is gone. You're yeah. like, you know what? Honestly, dating only people in my neighborhood. <laughs> that is how it works. If I can bike to their house, they're good. Yeah, I was like, I'm, I'm not rewiring a car if this blow up again in two weeks when I try to fucking get back down to your house again. <laughs> yeah, two ninety five pussy. It's oh, it's, it's a thing. Jesus. It's a thing. This podcast is unlistenable. Uh, we oh, need dude, to... I hope it is. I hope I'm gonna fucking send the link to my mom when you guys post this, and I hope she gets three minutes in and is like, "I tried. <laughs> I really, did. I tried. I tried so hard." Hey, Mama Eckenroth, how you doing? Hey, how are you? Um, your son's a monster. Uh, so, <laughs> no, he's a sweet boy. He is a sweet boy. Um, that was kind of crazy. Okay, and so so after that though, you had then kind of been like, you know, lust and love can be separate. I can actually just hook up with someone. Yeah. And so it's kind of a tough lesson weird, to learn. Yeah. It got weird. It got, it got weird. weird. I don't know. I because like you were saying, it's not a little sociopathic. Yeah. Because you, 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 there's no, I there, there was no in the gray area for a while there where yeah. I was just like, yo, I'm fucking bitches, or I'm like, oh, I'm just madly in love with this girl I made eye contact with once. Right. And then there was yeah. just like no in between. Yeah. For a while there. So yeah. I, I, I've had that. Although I, honestly, my whole thing is like, if if a, if a girl was pretty, I. Pretty much fell in love with her. Yeah. Like, that was just it. Oh, 100%. Yeah. And he only was like, I'll, I'm not attracted to you, but I'll fuck you. Why not? Yeah. What, what What do I have to do tonight? Oh, it's really? True. It's like when... I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be that guy. But when people say shit like that, I go like, yeah, guys are monsters. Like, they're just, yeah, no, we are. We are. I, I just don't want to. Like, I, that's the it's problem. So, it's I don't so like, hard to actively not be a monster. <sighs> no, I and think like, it's super easy. No, it's not. It. Because you think it is. But then, like, you have, you have to train yourself to, like... I had I was talking to my little brother earlier and like he as I said he's not always great in social interactions. He has a girlfriend, but he was at he was like you know if me and this girlfriend break up, how am I supposed to like go about talking to girls on the street? And I was like, okay, well this is what you do. Anything you want a girl to say to you, you just never say to them ever. Mm -hmm. And he's like, what do you mean? I was like, okay, if a girl walked up to you and was like, hey, do you want to go make out behind this bu these, <laughs> b these bushes? You would be like, thank you for this opportunity, ma'am. Ma I greatly appreciate your services. <laughs> and if you walked up to a girl and was like, hey, you trying to go make out behind them bushes? They'd be like, oh, I have pepper spray. Get the fuck away. Sure. And there's just like, no, in between. <laughs> like, right. Like, you need to learn to be a grown up before you can not be a monster. Right. <laughs> right. I guess so. Yeah. Uh, in some ways. I don't know. I've said some terrible things on this podcast in jest, obviously. But when it yeah. comes out, like, I don't know. Being, I, I just don't find when there's like, yeah, when you say shit like that, you're just like, I mean, I would think those thoughts, uh -huh. <laughs> you know, be like, that's a very beautiful woman there. Of course, if she was into me, right, I could be into her, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so, but I wouldn't, I would never just be like, I fuck you, like, just like a dipshit. Well, it's, I, I, I'm, I'm, these very are semantics. I feel like you're like overly of, simplified. I, no, no, I know. And these, these are semantics. A lot of people would argue that these are semantics and that all, like, you know, you're like, yeah, you should just be the animal nature that you are and just right. be like, dude, I just don't. I'm a gentleman, sir. Well, I'm, I'm very aware of the hypocrisy of the way I went things around it because sure. I would get, it, when I was in a dry streak, it would affect me emotionally Ugh, very yeah, much. Such a there is, sensitive. yeah, there's, uh, there's a little caveman like nobody wants my seed. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I just, kind of thing. You, you guys are relatively friendly with me. You know that there's like three month windows where I'm like nobody loves me. Exactly. Why doesn't Why doesn't anyone just think I'm cute? And that's why Tinder doesn't work is because like, I don't need to fuck right. people. I need to be reminded that people would be okay oh, fucking me. But, but that, 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 and then, that, that, like, that's as the soon other as I get matches, and I'm like, oh, it's it's just fine. We're cool. Yeah. But, We're no, good. That, 
<laughs> that's the other downside of like the OK Cupid and fucking Tinder thing is like you don't need to try that hard anymore to still fail if you're yeah. not getting those matches. And it was weird because I would do that a lot. Like I would, I remember I would like fucking strip down my entire profile and build it back up because right. out of nowhere it's just like I'm getting no responses. Am I fucking hideous now? What the fuck did I do? Right. And then I just started dating someone. I'm like everything's fine. None of that's a problem. Don't even fucking worry about. It. Yeah. And like I said, the hypocrisy. He's like, mm, I'm just fucking ugly. Hey, yeah, I'll talk to you. Hey, you're not my type. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Commiserating, yeah. The people you you want, you're not getting, and all the people that like you or or you know, you are getting, you're like this isn't real. Yeah, that's why I was <laughs> attracted to fucking to, people. Talk about being into damaged women. Like I am into like fucking really damaged physically and otherwise. Like oh, you going to depressive episodes? That's hot. Wait, where are you going? Where are you going? <laughs> oh, okay. I'll never talk to you again. Bye. <laughs> Um, it's yeah. I mean, dating is out there. It's, it's it's for for you having serious relationships. Then you're bouncing around. Then it's like black and white for you for a while. Yeah. For dating, I mean, is there any like trauma? In there was there like, were you letting people get close and your heart was being broken? And then other women, well, you no, were just there like, was, we're there just... was there was just one girl that like I had uh, started dating after me, and the girl broke up that yeah. I just fell in love with. Oh shit! She was like, she was a girl that I actually had met the week before I met the girlfriend from high school. I met her like a, at a concert. Okay. And I had gotten her number, and then like we had this like I had been hitting on her, and then I met the other girl, and it kind of fell through. Gotcha. And then like I just hit her up out of the blue, and I was like, hey, would you want to go see a movie sometime or something? And she was like, fuck yeah. Nice. And then I just like fell madly in love with her, and then she was like, nah, you're just kind of a dick appointment to me. <laughs> and I was like, what do you mean? Okay. We we hang out like three times a week, and you live forty five minutes away. There's obviously some sort of emotional thing mm, here. Right. And she's like, no, I just like fucking you. And I was like, huh. well, that's kind. Yeah, a little you. skin flap just tickles me. <laughs> yeah, <dude. laughs> just gets me in that right place. Oh, you dude. know it, man. You know it. <laughs> I like it when you put it all in, and then it's still dangling out the bottom. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. I oh, am. God. I am all kind of sorts today. Just like I a am. fucking seatbelt hanging out the car yeah, door. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Oh, I already did that. So. Oh, yeah. you did. I said the sweatshirt. Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, well, this has been a traumatic moment for me, Pete. Can you yeah. think of some traumatic things that happened to you? What would you say is the worst thing that has ever happened to you? Oh, that's a fucking, I know. that's a loaded a doozy, question. Right? That's what we got into here. Probably uh, something that, like, I think we've been trying to define this question as like something that you really had no responsibility for. Like, you know, oh, I chronically, yeah, I, I get chronic skin cancer. <laughs> like I get, I get, yeah, oh, I have, shit. I get skin cancer like every two years. They just shave my head and cut like. 15 to 17 like cancerous moles uh, off my head I mean alright we said traumatic stuff but come on I think we could try a little harder than that uh, no that sounds fucking terrible yeah I don't How? think I was molested or anything like that oh, okay, that's fine we're kidding yeah joking. no 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 I was fucking with you that's yeah. uh, you You have fucking you grow cancer the way yeah, I, I grow, grow toenails have you ever seen Dude, are you, wait wait hold on are you telling me you're like a weird chia pet for skin cancer kind of yeah where it, tops, it goes started, on the top of your head started, and they have to yeah, shave it down yeah started in 8th grade and then just like yeah once yeah, every year year and a half you've been dating women with cancer had this whole time, yeah, dude. If you got good head, you can yeah, have cancer. You can have cancer. Head. Good yeah. for you, dude. I'm gonna say good for you. That's crazy, man. Okay, so in eighth grade, ooh. yeah, yeah, it was actually the week before the like the eighth grade trip to Dorney Park. Oh, like, <laughs> yeah, oh. they're like, oh, by the way, we're gonna shave your head. We're gonna, you're gonna have scabs all over, it, and you're gonna have to wear a sombrero the rest of the summer. <laughs> and I was like, tight. <laughs> this is fucking. Guys, this, <laughs> this is. It feels like I'm appropriating a little bit of some culture. Really, I feel like sick. no, no. This, this is this is your sterile medical sombrero. Yeah, yeah. What's that? No, they're like, you know, they're like, you, can, uh, like you can wear a fedora if you want. And I was even even in eighth grade, I was like, like, yeah, I'm not wearing a fedora. No, no on, it's dude. fine. We're good. Do you have, like, do you have a, a ska do band? You have a, do you have a bowler? I can be yeah, like, yeah, right. Sort of a doily? Do you have like yeah, a yeah. propeller hat? Because I'll even rock that. I like. Well, I love the racist doctor who was writing that on the. Clearly, like, well, we can't give him. I prescribe him a Jew hat. <laughs> it's not really a lot of shoulder coverage, I feel like, you know. Oh, That's what uh, I mean. I'm imagining he needs the sombrero for the coverage, and then he's like, uh, Susan, uh, I, I don't want to I don't want to put Chinese hat on here. That said, feels rude. You said, you said the That's racist not. Doctor Who, but I've just heard that as racist Doctor Who. who? Yeah. Where they were like, "Oh, you must get them to a doctor." Cuz it's a box. Don't do, I'll get the camera off him right now. Let's uh that's not good. Uh, like, yeah. is, is he allowed to be wearing that fez? It's, it's, it's very interesting. He does, he does wear that okay? fez quite a bit. Oh, you need to wear a sombrero. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. Yeah, wild. Very strange, man. Wow. So now that just happens every two years? Yeah, now they just 
they just yeah they just scan my head and then they say like okay we've got to cut these ones off and you but, but you have hair like that's what I mean you have protection from the sun usually I've always seen you with hair yeah I don't really know but for it. some yeah. reason it just forms it just uh, what did yeah. have ever have you ever seen that commercial it's like a, a I think it's like for Lipitor or something but it's like uh it's like if John knows he's gonna have a heart attack John would do something to stop it right it's like John will eventually yeah. have a heart attack that's me with skin cancer they're like you're eventually going to have cancer throughout your entire body that may happen when you're 95 that may happen when you're 28 but your body just keeps making skin cancer Oh, so I was like, sick, Jesus. dude, let's be a comic. <laughs> yeah. Let's get into this silliness. Yeah, dude, it's getting weird. Holy shit. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's that's fucking crazy, man. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I, I'm picturing you with different hats in a montage oh, yeah, of no, you there's... trying to pick out different hats. Coming out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, this one. No, Scabby no, no, woman. No. <laughs> <laughs> Walking down the street. Yeah, um, I have a collection of, of hockey team snapbacks that have <laughs> rotated through. That is spectacular. I did not know that about you. I've yeah. never even seen you wear a hat that I can recall. Yeah, no, I don't think so. Hey, uh, okay. Well, I hope that it uh, never, it doesn't kill yeah. you soon. I, yeah. I appreciate that, friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, I soon. Was- while we're talking trauma, I think we could throw to the other fight in this video here. Why? Yeah, I like I, this. I, Why I, are we going to fights? I just love that you're just like, hey, you know what, guys? Let's kind of pep this podcast well, up. Let's go to people just getting rocked. Well, like I said, a lot of this this podcast is about finding the funny in bad things. Sure. So that's why I watched The last one was minute. a little too... I, <laughs> I'm having deja vu. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, let's <laughs> the last one, I really didn't have any things of. I didn't... It felt like I wanted more of the context because while he was saying, I was like... And then the guy says, he's like, oh, you think I'm just going to sneak you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you think I'm just going to sneak you with that right again? And then he just does. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, man, you really should have saw that coming. Uh, all, right. all right. Sorry. Well, this one is great, but I'll be honest. I don't even remember what happens with the fight. This is all about the guy recording it. <laughs> oh, okay. really? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. If for our listeners, if, you, if you're not on uh, the, the YouTube here. You're missing out. Yeah, you're missing out. There, there seems to be a – I love this because it seems as if – uh, the one time that a guy was like, baby, hold my shit real quick. <laughs> Cause there's a woman walking across along. There's a path, um, in the foreground that's closer to the viewers. Nobody's here. on the path. No one's on the path. And it's just trees above us. And there's clearly she's like a, a wheelie backpack. And I, several yeah, it might shopping be wheelie bags. or she's just holding she's getting so much dirt in those wheels. She's, she's not even paying attention because it seems like she might be with the gentleman that is to her left. And he's walking towards another gentleman directly as in, I guess we're seeing they're going to fight, but, I just love that she's like, all right, baby, I'm going to be in the house. Like, she's just walking casually away from uh, a you fight. You take care of this, baby. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to get Dennis started. The description oh, of this is good brawl in the streets. Yeah. Like, they they're, they're, they don't even know the context of this. They're like, yo, it was a good brawl. I don't know. Uh, I don't yeah. know why they're fighting, but it in was a good brawl. In the park at the most. We're not even in the streets. This is like Upper West Side Manhattan. Where are we? I don't know. Uh-oh. Uh, we, we need volume mm-hmm. on this. Uh-oh. Okay. Well, here, uh, that's the back. most important part of this. Okay. Hold on. Let me roll back a little touch. Sorry. Oh, is, this, is, this, is this a classic? Oh, shit. <laughs> it's, it's so much so, better than you can imagine. <laughs> okay. So, oh, this is, I love this. This gives a little more context. Oh, okay. So, oh, okay. Okay. The one, the one gentleman is on a phone yeah. and uh, the other one looks like he's also yelling into the phone. No doubt a mutual friend. Like, they're trying to have a three-way call. With. like, listen, man, I thought... I thought we had uh, tickets to the well, You Jefferson. know we had reservations. Where uh, the fuck are you? There's a, there's a P.D. Eckenroth running late on the other side of that phone. That's what's happening. <laughs> Oh, All right. sorry. I was trying to say, it was like, you, I thought we had tickets to Hamilton. Like, <laughs> so I could not get had you. I am, my, my, yeah, my brain is out today, everybody. I apologize. Hmm. Right. They're pushing each other. Phone goes flying. What about to get the business? Look. Okay, hold on. What the fuck is this? Is this World kick? star. Hold on, baby. Mm-hmm. World star. Now? What is, <laughs> why is she carrying the bag? Oh, All right. so All right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> World star cuss. Okay, come on. <laughs> Oh, he kicked that nigga. Oh. Happy this guy World is star. filming this during a children's birthday party. Here's your world star. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And many more. Oh, shit, he popped him, dude. He straight popped him. Oh, shit, yeah. You got knocked the fuck out of Mira. I got you this. Honey, no, we're gonna get the pony. We're gonna get the pony. Hold on, honey. Hold you on. can tell that, that the person way. fighting though is like has has never been in a fight and only knows how to fight from watching the UFC. Oh, oh yeah. Like, yeah. He was like, let me start with leg kicks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not good. 
Oh, but it's if not I want to make it to round three, I, I got to slow him down a bit. It seems to be. I feel like either now I don't know who's with who because the woman yeah. holding all his someone's bags is also getting kicked. <laughs> yeah, it's also then we see the aggressive. Well, we thought I was with. I thought they, she might have been with him. The the guy that what we're seeing is the guy in the blue shirt. Let's say, and then all of a sudden he realizes the guy in the blue shirt is just like trying to get this phone away from this other guy. For no reason, he's kicking the phone. Uh, listeners who uh, didn't get to watch it, it's actively kicking the phone again. I guess these Hamilton tickets are like really hot. He doesn't want him to have them. <laughs> Waiting in that lottery line all day. Yeah, yeah, it's a problem. We we should not be doing those voices. I feel like it's fine. I'm intentionally uh, not ethnicizing them. Please don't. Uh, it's not, it's already funny. Uh, uh, so let's be honest. I love fights like this, dude. Just what are you doing, Gerald? We have to be there by six. <laughs> Oh, he can vote with this guy. What am I, I going to do? I do love this fight. World star. <laughs> World, World star. star. Yeah, baby. We're gonna. This is a very important day for you. I know it's your happy birthday. We're all love yeah. you so much. Hold on, baby. Just give me one. World what star is going on over here? Oh. Oh, oh. oh. got to kick that nigga. <laughs> oh. Happy birthday. World star. World star. Happy birthday. <laughs> we just, we wanna... He joins in after right, this. Right, right. <laughs> We just want to gather everybody here. We're very sorry for uh, the loss of uh, William. And, it's just, and uh, oh, shit, he popped at least. <laughs> I just love the filming. I mean, just the filming other things is just a happy birthday. And as we lay to rest, rest our brother Robert's eternal soul. Oh, yo, he just hooked that motherfucker. <laughs> it's so, now we'll get, he's not going nowhere. Look at this shit. <laughs> it's so strange. that he, Yeah, you're supposed to do the eulogy. One more. Just hold on. Yeah. Real quick. Oh, God. This is such weird videos. No, dude, you can bump me. You can bump me, bro. It's fine. (laughs) So strange. I love it so much. Isn't isn't Cousin Charles doing a (laughs) (laughs) drop-in? Oh, my God. It's so good. Oh, that'd be even better if they did like the uh, the better happy birthday. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday. World star. Happy birthday to ya. Oh, should you see that? <laughs> you know we gotta get checked in early, Robert. Happy birthday I love to it. Oh, ya. Shit. Cody, we gotta park like three blocks away. <laughs> I'm not paying ballet because we're waiting for this son of a bitch. Oh, I still... if, we, if we park next to School of Rock and we can walk four blocks, <laughs> <laughs> they, they got a garage up. It. It's only $15 it's for the day. Right? <laughs> Jesus. I love it so much. Oh, my God. Uh, you did theater, though. You I know did, all yeah. your shit. Yeah. That's right. Oh, yeah. Shit. Did you have any big parts when you did theater? Uh, I was supposed to be the Scarecrow, and then I was failing Algebra Perfect 2. Scale so oh. that that didn't happen. Mm. Uh, I was Buffalo Bill in uh, in, the mu- in the musical Silence of the Lambs. Yes, yes. of course. I'm gonna wear your skin. I'm gonna wear your skin. Would you fuck me? I totally fuck me. (laughs) Wild horses. You put the lotion in the basket and everything's fine. (laughs) Give Uh, me back my fucking dog, you cunt. (laughs) (laughs) We're having a good time. (laughs) This is the second theater moment. Last time it was Ellie Summerling. Oh, yeah. yeah, sure. Fun fact, Ellie used to I teach at that high school you went to, and one of yeah. Ellie's former students is, the, is uh, and mutual friend is the girl that gave me. Oh, <laughs> the, 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 really? Yeah, the heckle the on my schmackle. Yeah, yeah, there you go. I did not know. Yeah. Small penis world. Small it dick is. world, yeah, dude. Holy Small shit. Small dick dude. world. Shout, <laughs> shout out Cindy Staffy. Yeah, Hell yeah, yeah dude. Yeah. Should have saw that one coming, to be honest. Um, that's crazy. Yeah, you got a lot of, we, we're in, we're covering trauma, we're, moving, we're making good ground here. We are, we're seeing yeah. a lot of good stuff I mean, we could on. get right to the last thing, yeah, I yeah, think. Yeah. There. I think we're, we're there. Passion, yeah. love, and trauma. I mean, we're hitting all of it. So, yeah. I so I mean, where? Uh, what's your first experience with death? Oh, um, hmm. I don't know. I haven't really had any like prevalent experiences with death really? yet. Um, yeah, I've sold both my grandparents and my great grandma. Uh, they all live in like a two block radius of my parents' house, okay. actually. Um, hmm. But yeah, I don't know. My like uncle Bobby died when I was in like. Uh, probably late elementary school and that was the first funeral but I don't remember being like overly emotional okay. and then like my grandma's my uncle Joe like my great uncle Joe died and that was the, the only time I've ever been like emotional at a funeral okay where I was like these are all Damn. deaths that were I mean you know you have elderly Old deaths people. so those were yeah, yeah uh, so and the only like, yeah I guess the only person that was like important to me that died like not at like a an old person death was my friend's mom had a stroke and okay. she was like, uh, like really the, 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 yeah, the lacrosse like mom for like my uh, whole okay. life. Mm. Yeah. I'm really surprised. So you didn't have, you didn't have a bunch of, you didn't have like uh, some, some kids running around <laughs> training. 
Oh, we have a whole bunch of kids that did, that OD'd. I just was not into friends. drugs at that okay. time. Yeah. <laughs> they no, weren't, they weren't yeah. my friends. No, I was or just like, car oh. accidents when you're, yeah, it's usually yeah. sometimes if friends um, got, no, you don't have to yeah. think about it. I'm not asking. Hey, man, yeah, why don't you have friends so. who died? No. I, I feel like a lot of teens don't die. I feel like heroin gets them before the cars ever do. It's crazy. Uh, yeah, we actually, no, a kid uh, who graduated with me actually did get hit by a car and died a couple weeks ago. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, he was, just, he was drunk as fuck and just like walked in the middle of the light on like 73 in Cherry Hill and just got bopped. Mm. Yeah. yeah, we've. That, yeah, that happens. It does Ooh. happen. It happens when you ignore lights on highways. <laughs> there is a, uh, I, I, I won't say who, there is an old friend of mine who once told me, like right after it happened, that uh, they had hit somebody with their car in Gloucester and they were fucked up and they just went home and they never found out what happened about it. So that's just. Uh, like hit Pete, like a. Just, just like, let it hang. Killed a pedestrian? <laughs> yeah. Might have. Just sick. Might have <laughs> sick. Actually, I'm trying to even think if it was the friend I remember saying that. Well, I'm imagining that means so many people admit their if murders to me. You say as a friend, and then right. you like don't give any more guesses. I'm just well, was start guessing anyone that I know that you may also. It was so know. strange because the next summer, systematically, all his friends were killed. That's right. <laughs> By a man in a terrible white mask. Mm. Um, that's they all so, had they all had hook marks. Yeah, they all had hook marks. There you go. We got a great reference out. Oh, I'm fucking lacking today. <laughs> I am fucking lacking. Okay, so there's like, based on that description, there's like three movies that I think we can yeah, refer to. Yeah, Scream, I was going with. There's Scream, uh, Jeepers Creepers with the hooky part, and sure. then. Yeah. Right, but. I know but, what you did last but, summer. But, but I, I know, I know I what you I did last funny. summer was The Longshoreman, yeah. and like Scream was like the suburban mom. Yeah. I don't think this person walking in the middle of the night through Gloucester is going to be any kind of. Yeah, Wait, what's your so what's your opinion on Gloucester as a a South Jersey? Because I have a I am very pro Gloucester as a mm. place. I'm very anti Belmar. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because like Gloucester is anti. Well, Belmar is my hometown. Why are you so anti Belmar? Oh, uh, because so you'll understand this, Neil. You might not. also. My mom won the title of anti Belmar for three years. Anti Belmar. <laughs> Uh, no, uh, I'm very, yeah. They don't give her a sash. They just give her four tires. (laughs) (laughs) Gloucester knows what they are. They're like, yo, we like do a lot of heroin and we like drinking, but it's a nice place. Raise your kids. We got two Catholic schools. Mm -hmm. And Belmar is like, oh, we're just like running meat in Glendora, except we're just all on I get meth. you. I get you. And then, like, they just don't know what they are. They're in denial about the fact that half of their town is Section 8 housing yep. and that everyone I know who's ever tried to offer me pills lives in Belmar. Yeah. No, no, that's very, it, like, you would think from the outside, because you drove around my hometown before. Yeah, Again, you didn't think there were Nazi parties happening. I did not. There were. There were actively Nazi parties going on. Yeah, yes. I did not see that coming. <laughs> at all yeah. uh, even from where I'm from they're usually just old Italian racists it's not right. usually like <laughs> you know actually like hey you wanna check out the garage <laughs> like a paraphernalia <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah it's kind of scary stuff <coughs> um, speaking, no, yeah. speaking of scary stuff let's just get into our last little thing here that would oh, be sure. the suicidal depressive black metal no, song, song of, of the, the week week Ooh. week 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 this is a genre dedicated to the sadness of the world and wallowing. Our song this week is by Zaster. I'm not going to tell you how to spell that. Uh, telepathic with the deceased. Neil, if you could play that while I read some of the lyrics, please. Uh, kind of wrong there. Okay. Haters of life are telepathic with the deceased. Fragments of failure. For it only bears a meaning when all life is torn apart. We are messengers of death. Oh, look at that. Visit beautiful Belmar. Percocets on every street corner. Yeah, really. Oh, Oh, man. Look at these guys trying. This is adorable. That's actually considered one of the better bands in the genre. I love this. Really? Yeah. I no, love, I'm familiar with them, actually. Oh, yeah. really? There you go. Yeah, I to. love this album cover. The art is not uh, It's this bad where they had to put a bubble to show you where they're actually <laughs> trying to accent. <laughs> <Look> here. <laughs> this is really what our death metal's about, really. I, I love the fucking logo, though. So as one, far as black metal logos, that's a pretty sick one. One of the better logos, I would have to say. I mean, it's, it's yeah, it's not too shabby. Yeah. I, I love it. I mean, the old English, you know, stuff. They're going for, what is it? Is this meant to be Byzantine or no? This isn't Byzantine. It's in the wrong section of the earth. It's kind of hard to make out. Yeah, it but, looks, uh, a little, lo- looks a little like Turkish. Yeah, it's got a little, especially these patterns on these horses and stuff mm. here. It's very interesting. But then the noble pin, this is more English settler over here. This might be Dutch. 
something like that. Sorry, I'm just digging into art history here. I apologize, everybody. But uh, these uh, also that did fit a lot of the mold. It was a little sharper. Mm-hmm. I can still not make out. I like at least if I can actually hear them. I couldn't even hear lyrics in there. <coughs> right. Well, Sometimes we do this. How did you know about them? I didn't realize you. Oh, were... I, I'm just, I was just an angsty boy oh. for a while there. Yeah. Yeah, Sometimes you need yeah. you need good tunes to cut yourself to. Yeah. That's all. Oh yeah, dude, I was I was very into like a day to remember as a, as oh, a middle schooler. God. So I yeah, I eventually became actually angry. That was that that was where I tuned out of a lot of that stuff because I never really got the uh, the the it called good cop bad cop vocals. It's like eh, da, 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 da. why you gotta take me down? Yeah. <laughs> That's, that's smart that they call that good cop, bad cop vocals. I like that. Right. I never knew what that was called. I always just thought that was just a, yeah, like with pop punk and sometimes like that's kind of sprinkled in depending on what kind of musical genre you are in terms of metal. I've heard that in different kinds right. of stuff. But Newfound Glory is a big place where it actually came yeah. from because yeah. they were all very, very pop punk. And then all of a sudden, like the one guitarist just started screaming his background vocals. Really? Yeah. And like, Have I waited to, waited to roll? Like that's, <laughs> no, that's, have... that's what their new shit sounds like. Really? Well, the, the guitarist who didn't get arrested for trying to fuck 13 <gasps> the, other, the other one that stayed behind is fucking like grizzled and rough now so he's gotta gotcha yeah. <laughs> I did not know yeah it's so crazy that Brand New wrote uh, The Boy Who Blocked Their Own Shot like 10 years before it came out that the singer fucked like 15 year olds wait who? <laughs> the singer from Brand New I didn't like know the singer a, from like Brand a, New a, like a pedophile rapist apparently Came out like three years ago. If you yeah. could look up brand new like sex the, allegations, that's yeah. uh, that's going to be very hard to Google. Maybe that went right into the band yeah. <laughs> in the first place. <laughs> going to have every fucking low level politician. Right, I, put that in. I really <laughs> hope I don't find out like sex things about Levon Helm now. Now that you mentioned the band hmm. brand new sex offender. Oh, Jesse Lacey. Okay. Yeah. No, wait, that's right. This all right. This is ringing a bell now. These were guys who were big like late two thousands. They had just released an acclaimed new album, went to number one. Like, this was their big... Fu- like, this was like when Green Day came out with American Idiot. This was yeah. like their big victory tour. We're back! Only the Billy Joe Armstrong equivalent has been fucking teenagers. Yeah, pretty much. Wow. Okay, yeah, sorry. Uh, that has changed the past week. Uh, Brian Diaz, former guitar... Yeah, Brian D- Diaz. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the former guitar uh, technician for the acclaimed uh, yeah, alternative rock group. Brand new, posted the following messages on Facebook. Oh. He solicited nudes for me starting when I was 15 and he was 24. Manipulated the hell out of me. See, this is the downside. So many of those bands got ahead because they were great at promoting on MySpace to 14-year-olds. Yeah. Like, well, that's how a lot... Uh, there was a guy, uh, the guy from the band Blood on the him? Dance Floor, I think, got in Fuck trouble for that same thing. Blood on the Dance Floor. Yeah. Well, it's just like, yeah, even like Power Bottom, like even like, oh, these, yeah, like LGBT band. like bands that got big on social media were being equally like, e- equally woke bands were being just equally rapey to different people. That that <sighs> that Power Bottom thing, though, I got to admit, it, obviously you don't want anybody to get sexually abused in any way, shape, or form, but like, oh, really? The, 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 the guy who uh, says that he's on the LGBT BTQ thing, but really just looks like a dude in a dress. He he was using that to take advantage of people. No, no, I never. I can't. Oh, but still my beating heart. I can't believe. It, I, I can't. I, 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 I can't believe there's not a stereotype about this. It happens so rarely. Oh wait, Is there a stereotype? I, I'm not parsing these two things together. I find them straight, coincidental. Straight white dudes infiltrating. Uh, outsider subcultures only to take advantage of it the way they. Oh. Yeah, like the, the guy from Power Bottom isn't even gay, and he like wore a dress on stage, and like he he's not like a a, a transsexual person, he's not like a cross dresser, he just only did it on stage to get press. Oh, and then was but like, yeah, that's and old then hat. Was, didn't and then was writing like LGBT pros, like pro LGBT songs. Sure, right. that, that's where like, Gizzle did. They were they were directly the trying like, to appeal to that. Like okay. it would be if you and I put on blackface and we're trying to you know we're representing Black Philly, and right. people just. Accepted it for a while. We were talking about that project, and I thought you weren't going to say it. <laughs> I mean, Jesus. Patent I pending. So, patent pending. I am kidding. <laughs> don't know how much that. We're I don't trying know to add. I, if, don't know why I have to say that. No, I just, no. If you oh, ever get busted for racist, it's like, no, it's an extra layer of meta. So in the context here, this guy, right. So he was promoting these songs that were pro LGBT, which are great. And then he somehow is then also trying to get these young kids. To fuck them, yeah. Ugh. Piece of shit. I just don't. I don't connect the same thing of like and the dress thing and that's stuff. That's why I gotta listen listen to good wholesome music such right. as Rush or Dream Theater. Fuck yeah! I'm going or, to see him next week. Hell yeah! Oh, dude. they're back already. 
Uh, they're, they're doing they're, the they're doing the Dream theater right not yeah, not rush right. They're they're, what they're doing is they're doing their smaller market second run of the oh. tour they were doing. So I'm going to see literally the same show I saw before, but I'm going to have my lovely girlfriend Perry with me. Oh, that's yeah. wonderful. Because I got I got her in fucking nerd metal now. So. Oh really? Yeah, you yeah she likes Dream Theater. Yeah, really. Like three weeks in. How long are you guys going? Out? Um, <laughs> get her hooked on Dream. That's deep. That's deep. I have I've met her like three it. times now, so it's obviously been more than like three weeks. But like, no, it's I been know. we're it we're is. we're coming up. Oh, it'll be it'll be three months oh, next week. Yeah. Cute. And I we it, we count from the day we met because it was off to the fucking races. Ugh. All right. Sorry, what? That was oh, a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, anyway, on topic, Pete. What do you think happens when we die? Oh, um, I don't know. There's a. Okay, so there's a book called Elsewhere that like really like helped me like define what I think about that. Pretty much like the, when you die in this book, like you get sent to heaven and you start aging backwards. Mm. And then like once you hit zero again, it's when you get born again, like and like okay. travel back down. And that checks out to me, like that there's like some like some reflection period to like mm. try to gain something from it, and then you know. To, to the ultimate goal of like Nirvana, if that's what we want to call it. I like that. I could, yeah. I, could, I could fuck with that cosmological model. Yeah. But I also, I have a very distinct, like, I don't think there's a hell. Like, I don't think there can be a hell. Yeah. If, yeah. If we're, if we're claiming that we're made this way by a, some divine dude, then we, that dude won't be mad at us for being the way we are. Exactly. Like, sure. Right. Yeah. Oh, I like it. That's very nice. Down with that's it. Very, what was the book again? Uh, it's called Elsewhere. Elsewhere. I don't remember who it's by, but it was really good. I had to read it like Natalie grade. Winch, our, our I hope former it's high school Winch. teacher. She I mean, she writes cosmological models and uh, you know <laughs> farm to table nonfiction. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I like it, Pete. This was this was a nice, this was a clean fucking yeah, episode. This is, this is I fun. like Thanks it. Thanks for having it's me, guys. Very, very nice. We, really we, we got, it. We've gotten a little sprawly lately. I like having a nice, compact fit. This episode's got like a nice ass and a tight little waist, and I'm <laughs> and a lot of skin cancer, and I'm all about it. Oh yeah. So uh, again, plug what you got coming up. Tell us your social media again. Oh, uh, so you can follow me at, uh, at pdeck42 on Instagram and Twitter. E C K. Yes, P E T E E C K forty two. Uh, and then you can see me at the Shiva Fools Music Festival uh, this upcoming weekend in Egg Harbor, New Jersey. And you can see me on Neil Wood's show at some point in November. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 All right. Oh, oh you're, you're sorry, you're Jesse. You just looked at me. Um, yeah, so why don't you just go to IamNeilWood.com or go to NerdsWithWordsPodcast.com and we're formatting it over to uh, Dropped Media, which is the network we're on right now. And you can check out mm-hmm. all the other podcasts on there, plus the shows that are coming up. Yeah, he, they can't see you. They don't know what they're looking yeah, at. I actually the should, go over to, I should go over to you now. Yeah, yeah, there we go. You can check out all the other podcasts and more are joining um, every other week. So uh, we got a lot coming for you. Okay, Jesse, that's, I mean... <laughs> Stop uh, gloating. Uh, so, but yeah, uh, shows coming up. Um, let's see. We got oh, of course, October fifth and October tenth are the next cool shows that you can go to. October fifth is in Chalfont. No, I'm sorry, uh, Hatboro. Uh, you can check that out. The laboratory. We just were walking around, meeting nice people. Uh, right in Hatboro is really, really wonderful. It is BYOB and BYOF. Bring whatever you want. We'll bring the comedy. It'll be a good time. And then October tenth in uh, Chalfont, and that's always packed out in the downstairs room. So uh, buy those tickets now. And yeah, just nerds with words uh, podcast dot com and get all your tickets. Yeah, I just did the shelf out show recently at the pop in. That place is fucking awesome. It's Very a it's cool. a weird little nerd haven in the middle of nowhere, Pennsylvania, and it's yeah. really really cool. And I dug it. And uh, Lamar Lee personally killed a Chinese lantern fly outside doing his civic duty with a Hell comical yeah, a comical like Harley Quinn hammer. Well, it's it's very strange you mentioned that because Adam just killed one in Hapro. There you go. Like I didn't know what's. Go- uh, I'll look up later. Apparently, why people are just like, they're, they're they're an they're invasive species. Uh, yeah, pestilence. Got it. Um, okay, well, how about you, Jesse Bamis? What are you? Gonna uh, I about? ain't booked for shit. I just got booked for I something. Might put you on something then. There you go. I just got booked for something. Noah Houlihan is running. That's the guys at High Note Humor. Hell yeah! On October twenty third, I will be part of a thirty comic Royal Rumble style roast battle. Oh, very nice. I don't know how the fuck that's going to work, but I am there and I'm going to be going to enter I, number I one and be the, the Iron Man. He, I love the high note uh, humor people. Yeah, it's very good. odd that that got announced directly after we uh, announced at Cave our 30 man Royal Rumble roast battle. Ah, well, see, so, I didn't I, I, I didn't get booked for that. So we're not that, talking that about you that. did not. No, that's yeah. true. Even though Sean Gardini <laughs> asked me Sean. when he only had 10 people signed up. But yeah. so that's OK. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, well, they just don't want to get too. Right. Gardini on the also one. had me ask Cody, Rusty, and Jeff Colella. And none of the book out. No, and then immediately was like, "Oh, I made the list. I forgot to put them on that." And then <laughs> had them all mad at me. And then when people dropped out, made me go back to them and be like, "Hey, would you want to be on the show?" <laughs> It's it. a, it's all fun. Booking shit's a pain in the ass. Anyway, uh, at Jesse Dram at Magic Misery Tour, we're gonna leave you with the sweet sounds of the Lachs of Soft Tour. Um, be sure to wear your medical sombreros and say stay safe out there. Goodbye. This has been a Drop Tent Media Production.